In this video, we are going to be talking about fraction division, specifically the invert and multiply procedure. In order to divide one fraction by another, students are taught to invert one fraction and multiply the fractions to get their answer. Why does this procedure work? It may not make any sense to use multiplication and division, but students simply learn the procedure do it and often are not allowed to ask questions about it. Let's look at an example. 5 divided by 1 fourth. In the fifth grade standards, students are expected to be able to divide a whole number by a unit fraction, just like this example. Before I get into the details of multiplying by the reciprocal, I just want to highlight a detail about the type of division being used. If I have 6 divided by 2, there are two ways of dividing. The first is to see it as 6 being split into two groups, and there ends up being 3 in each group that the 6 was divided into. The second way is to split the 6 into 2's and then find that it divides into 2 3 times. When divided by a fraction, 6 divided by a half, using this form of division, we split the 6 into halves and then find that it divides into half 12 times. The second form of division on the right is the way of dividing when we use the invert and multiply method. So coming back to the beginning of the video, I have 5 divided by 1 fourth. If I follow the procedure, I will multiply 5 by the reciprocal of 1 fourth, which is 4, and get 20. In order to gain insight into why this procedure works, we need to understand what a reciprocal of a fraction really is. The reciprocal of a fraction represents the number of parts needed to make that fraction a whole. For instance, the 4 and 1 fourth means it would take 4 of those parts to make one whole. So one can divide into one fourth four times because it takes four one fourths to make one whole. Since we know there are four one fourths for every whole, we can solve two divided by one fourth as two times four and get eight because it takes four one fourths to make a hole, and here we have two holes. If you remember from the beginning of the video and the type of division we're performing, you can think of this as asking, how many one-fourths are in two? And so this two represents the number of holes that we have, and we're multiplying that by four, which is the reciprocal, which tells me the number of fourths in each hole. When I multiply those two, I get eight, and that tells me there are eight fourths in two. Here's kind of a visual of what that looks like. I have two holes. Each of them have four fourths in them. So two times four is eight. So now, coming back to five divided by one fourth, we can make sense of five times four equals 20 because the reciprocal tells me how many copies of that fraction it takes to comprise a whole, and in this case that's four one-fourths, and I'm multiplying that by however many holes I have, which in this case is five holes. So I have that four and that five, and I can multiply them to get 20. This can continue on with whatever number is provided. So 50 divided by one-fourth, is 50 holes, and each of those holes is 4 1 fourths, and you get 200 1 fourths in 50. Same down here, working with a different unit fraction. If I had 100 divided by 1 third, I think of it as 100 holes multiplied by 3 1 thirds, because it takes three of them to make a whole, and I get 300 one thirds. So the reason we can invert and multiply when dividing fractions is due to the equal groups nature of the reciprocal. 
Four as a reciprocal represents four one-fourths for every whole. Three represents three one-thirds for every whole, and so on. This is why we can use this procedure when dividing fractions.